first graders. Today's story is called Selene. Our learning objectives are to identify elements of a folk tale, identify similarities and differences in three fairy tales, demonstrate an understanding of the word fright and the demonstratives this, that, those, and these, and use a graphic organizer to compare and contrast three folk tales. Our key vocabulary are curious, fright, intending, and roam. Curious is a noun, and it means wanting to learn or know more. Okay, Alejandro was curious as a child and asked questions about every new thing he came across. Fright. Fright is a noun, and it means a feeling of sudden fear. The wolf gave Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother quite a fright. Intending is a verb, and it means planning. We are intending, or planning, to finish our homework before dinner so that we can watch a movie after eating. Roam. Roam is a verb, and it means to wander, to travel around without a purpose or plan. The cows roam around the fields on the farm during the day. Okay, who remembers the name of the folktale we heard in the previous lesson? Hugu Po. In which country did the story of Hugu Po originate? China. And who were the characters in Hugu Po? The mother, O Xing and Li Hao, and Hugu Po. How did the sisters escape the tiger? They poked a hole in the sack with the mulberry bush uh, stick, and then they tied the tiger's feet up with the uh, silk, right? All right. And is Hugu Po true or fictional, and how do you know? It's fictional, right? Because animals can't really transform into people. Okay. How is Hugu Po similar to a story that you have already heard? So what story is it similar to and how? Little Red Riding Hood because they both have cunning animals who are trying to trick the characters so that they can eat them, right? So today's story um, originated in a country called Botswana many years ago. So this is the continent of Africa, okay? And this is the country Botswana. What other story have you heard that came from the country or came from a country in the continent of Africa. It was the girl with the red slippers. It was um, from Egypt, which is here in the continent of Africa. Okay. I want you to listen carefully to hear the similarities between this story, Little Red Riding Hood, and Hugu Po. Once upon a time in the southern region of Africa, where the Bantu language is spoken, there lived a girl named Selene. She lived with her mother and father. The family lived in a little round house with a thatched roof. One day, Selene's mother said, I must go to the village, for we need some things. You may stay here, but be sure to keep the door locked and watch out for hungry leopards who roam the land. So what are the mother's instructions? Lock the door, stay inside, and be careful for leopards, right? Selene's mother set out for the village. Selene stayed home by herself. Selene had stayed home by herself before. Each time her mother would return and call out to her in a call out in her sweet high voice that sounded like the song of the Ataga bird. Selene, my child, her mother would call from outside the door. I have brought you some food. Open up the door. That is my mother's voice, Selene would say. Her voice is high and sweet like the song of the Ataga bird. So how is Selene describing her mother's voice? High and sweet like a bird, right? Each time, Selene would open the door and see her mother standing there. Her mother would always bring Selene some bread and porridge. Selene would then sit down and eat with her mother. 
One day, when Selene's mother had gone to the village, Selene heard a knock on the door. Selene, my child, said a low, gruff voice. It is your mother. I have brought you some food. Open the door. Okay, hold on here. Stand up if you think that this voice sounds like the earlier description of Selene's voice. Stay sitting down if you don't think that this is the same voice as earlier. You should be sitting down. That is not my mother's voice, said Selene. My mother's voice is high and sweet like the song of the Otago bird. Go away, you wicked leopard. So what characters have you met so far? Selene, her parents, and now this leopard, right? How did Selene describe her mother's voice? High and sweet, like the song of the Otago bird. And how does Selene know that it's actually a leopard at the door? Because it's not the same voice, right? The leopard went away, but he came back soon after and tried to make his voice sound like a woman's voice. Selene, my child, said the leopard. It's your mother. I have brought you some food. Open the door. That is not my mother's voice, said Selene. My mother's voice is high and sweet like the song of the Otago bird. Go away, you wicked leopard. The leopard went away. He came back, but in this time, he drank a special drink to make his voice higher, to sound like Selene's mother's voice. Selene, my child, said the leopard in a high, womanly voice. It is your mother. I have brought you some food. Open the door. That is my mother's voice, said Selene, high and sweet like the song of the Otago bird. Selene opened the door and saw the leopard. With a fright, or sudden fear, she tried to slam the door shut again, but it was too late. The leopard stuffed Selene into a sack and carried her away, intending, or planning, to take her back to his habitat in the savanna. After carrying the heavy bag for a while, the leopard stopped by a small stream. After traveling so far in the heat and carrying the heavy bag, he needed a cool drink. Rather than carry the bag, the heavy bag down to the stream, the leopard left the bag on the side of the road, as he intended to be away from it only for a short moment. The leopard climbed down the hill to the stream to get a drink. As soon as he was gone, the little girl came a little girl came walking down the road. Seeing a bag all alone on the side of the road, the girl became curious, so she peeped inside the bag. The little girl wanted to know what was inside that bag, okay? She saw some fingers sticking up and quickly closed the bag. Whose fingers were those? She asked. Mine, said a voice. My name is Selene. Please let me out. I'm smothered in here by this small, hot space. So she's saying that being covered is making it hard to breathe, okay? Selene, said the girl, why, your mother's my aunt. She's been visiting here in the village. The little girl let Selene out of the bag. Then she and Selene ran to Selene's mother. When she heard what had happened, Selene's mother filled the leopard's bag with scorpions and snakes. When he had finished getting his cool drink, the leopard came back to the road and grabbed the sack. Then he set off for his home. When the leopard arrived home at the savanna, he opened the bag, intending to start eating his tasty feast. But instead, angry snakes slithered out. Dozens of scorpions poured out of the bag, shaking their poisonous tails. The leopard put his great speed to work and darted, or ran quickly across the savanna, never to bother Selene or her family again. As for Selene, she decided to always accompany her mother to the village and follow her mother's instructions, and they all lived happily ever after. So what lesson did Selene uh, learn? To make sure that she followed directions, right? Okay, that is the end of our story. Go ahead and take a quick break for a snack um, or a stretch, and then come back for our comprehension questions.
Okay, who does Selene's mother warn her about when she leaves to go to the village? The leopards that roam the land. Who knocks on the door and pretends to be Selene's mother? The leopard, right? How does Selene know that it's not really her mother at the door? The leopard's voice is low and gruff, while Selene's mother is high and sweet. In what other story does this happen? This happens in Little Red Riding Hood when the wolf tries to sound like the grandmother, right? What does the leopard do to make his voice sound higher? He drank a special drink, right? What does the leopard do when Selene opens the door? He puts her in a sack and carries her away. What other story is the main character carried away in a sack? In Hugu Po, right? Oshing and Lihao are carried away in a sack. How is the way that Selene got out of the sack different than how Oshing got out of the sack? Selene was let out by a little girl who was walking down the road, right? And Oshing used a mulberry, um, a mulberry branch to poke a hole in the sack to get it out. To get them out. All right, so what lesson did Selene learn in this folktale? To always follow her parents' directions, right? And what other lesson, uh, or what other stories did we learn this lesson? Little Red Riding Hood and Hugu Po, okay? All right, word work time. In the read aloud you heard, with a fright, Selene tried to slam the door shut again, but it was too late. I want you to say the word fright for me. Fright. I want you to say it as a robot. Fright. I want you to say it in a whisper voice. Fright. And now I want you to say it in a mouse voice. Fright. All right. Fright means a sudden feeling of fear. Okay. Trey's house always made sounds at night that would give him such a fright. Has something or someone ever given you a terrible fright? I want you to try to use the word fright when you tell about it. Okay, what's the word we've been talking about? Fright. All right, I'm going to read you some sentences. If I describe a situation that would give you a fright, say, that would give me a fright. If I describe a situation that would not give you a fright, I want you to say, that would not give me a fright. Remember to answer in complete sentences. Um, another thing is different things scare different people. So not everybody is going to be scared by the same thing, okay? So these are your opinions. A spider falls on your desk. That would give me a fright because spiders kind of freak me out. I'm not terrified of them, but they do. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan. Okay, how about a dog barks at you? That would not give me a fright because I love dogs and I'm used to barking dogs. Your friend gives you a hug. That wouldn't give me a fright. All of the lights suddenly go out. It, it might give me a fright, except for if I'm at school because that happens to me a lot at school. But if I was at home and it happened, then it would give me a fright. A friend calls you to play outside. That wouldn't give me a fright. How about if a friend came up behind you and yells, boo? That would give me a fright. All right, guys, let's check and see if we have reached our learning objectives. So we identified elements of a folktale. We identified similarities and differences in three fairy tales. We were able to demonstrate an understanding of the word fright. In a minute, you are going to demonstrate an understanding of the demonstratives, this, that, those, and these. And you will also, in a minute, use a graphic organizer to compare and contrast three folktales. That's all I've got in this video for you today. I will see you next time.